let us get started. Okay, so we're going to start with a question straight out of functions and graphing. And this is what the question says. It says, you use the graph, make a bigger one here. You use the graph, so that's this thing to the left here, to solve the simultaneous equation y equals 2x minus 4 and y equals minus x plus 5. Now, in terms of color coding, 2x minus 4 seems to be that one. You can see it's labeled, and that's the pink one. Now, I want to know, can you solve this equation simultaneously by looking at the graph? And when we say solve simultaneously, we mean find a value of x and y that satisfy both this equation and this equation at the same time. Now, some of you might be thinking, goodness, I've never seen this. Then it's important that you do say so in the chat. Um, but... I want to ask, if you can answer this, put your vote A, B, C, or D. Otherwise, um, I'd love to hear a question about if you're feeling confused about how to approach this. Now, remember, it said, look, look at the graph. Eh? It didn't say use algebraic methods. It said, look at the graph. Who feels like they can tell me how to look at the graph. I want someone to come online and help me to go, how do I connect the equations to the graph? And how do I connect that to an answer? Because I feel a lot of students haven't, don't really know that the graph and this equation are connected. So just pop your hand up if you're willing to share your thinking about the graph and these two equations. Aha. Uh -huh. So if you look, if we look at these two graphs, there are a couple of important, this is an intersection point, or this is an intercept for that graph, and that's an intercept. And that's good, you know, and there's also an intercept over here, an intercept over here. And that's the x intercept of each of those two graphs. But remember, the question is asking to solve the simultaneous equation using the graph. And I'd love to hear some student give an impression of what, um, What's being asked here? What does it mean to solve a simultaneous equation? Does it, put your hand up if you're willing or put something in the chat. I'll give you a little bit more time before we start voting. And um, I'll even explain it a little bit more. So lots of students are saying B is the correct answer. So what is B? B is this one over here. Now, I don't know if it's the correct answer yet, but let's try it out. If it is the correct answer, it means that if I put x is 3 and y is 2 into this equation and that equation, it makes it true. So let's see what I can do. So I have a y value. So is 2 equal to 2? Now, what was the x value? It was 3. Yeah? 3 minus 4. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 4 is 2, and so yes, it satisfies that one. Now what about the second equation over here? If I put the point uh, 3, 2, which is what this, oh wait, yeah, both of these are good. <laughs> okay, so if I put the point 3, 2 in, or that's what this is here, I would put a 3 here for the y, and then I'd get a minus, oh, I'm telling lies here. I should get a 2 for the y, and then I'll get minus 3 plus 5, and which is 2. And that's also true. Okay, so it turns out that both b and c are correct because they're basically the same thing. And so you could have said b or c. But what I wanted you to notice okay, was that if you have two graphs where they cut each other, it's also going to be the solution to the equation. So watch this. I go one, two, three. So the x must be in line with three. And I go one, two. And over here, this is in line with two. And so that's why we know that the answer to this will be three, two, because that's where the two lines cut each other. Now, 
what I did here was try something out, but you could have always done it using algebra. And if you'd done it using algebra, you would have said, I make the two variables equal. So y equals 2x minus 4, y equals minus x plus 5. And I simply say that. And now if I solve that equation, I will also get the answer. So let me solve that for you quickly. Uh, I'm going to add x to both sides. And what that gets me is that. And then I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And that's going to give me that. I get 3x is 9. If I divide both sides by 3, I get x is 3. And now to get the y value, I can plug it back into the, any of these original equations. I'm going to use the one that has 2x minus 4. And so 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. Okay. Give me a thumbs up. If you understand what an intersection point is and you understand how I found it you know, just looking at the graph and I, you understand how I did it using algebra. Just want to make sure because this is a very common question and um, it's important that we have a good example first before I get going, really open the throttle. Okay. Now, Moving on to a second question. I want to ask you, before we even start, the, the question is, find the intersection point of these two functions. Before you even give me an answer, I want to ask what is different about this question compared to the last question? And you can raise your hand or you can put it in the chat. What is different about finding the intersection points. So I'll say find intersection or intersecting points or intersection points. I want to know what's different about finding intersection points this time. So raise your hand or put it in the chat if you feel like you know what's different. Is this easier? Is this harder? So a couple of comments from students. This is a parabola with a different equation from the straight line. Um, we have a straight line graph and we have a parabola from Michelle. Um, so Gavato says one is a parabola and the other is a linear one. The graphs are different. Okay, so the graphs or the relationships we're visualizing, the one looks like a bit like a ball going through the air and that one is a parabola. And then the other one is the straight line and they have a relationship. Now, when I say I want to find the intersection points of these two functions, what do you think the answer is going to be looking just at the graph? What do you think the answer is going to be for the intersection point? Or are there two? Who knows? Nice, Mish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Annie has suggested that one of her solutions, she's offering minus three and two. So if I go to minus three, so one, two, three, there's minus three. Now, I think that there is and he's suggesting that I think that this point over here is an intersection point. And I agree with her first, but I'm not sure I agree with the two, though. Because um, it looks to me like these two graphs cut here. Does anybody else have an answer they want to share or give a go at? So, the solution that seems to be coming through is minus three minus eight, which is the one down here where the two graphs are equal. Are there any other intersection points? Well, I think that this one over here has two as its um, 
x coordinate. Now, what's the y coordinate going to be? Because remember, we're counting like this minus one, minus two, minus three, it's five, minus six. Okay. So Michelle has said, and Mesh has said that they think the other intersection point is this one over here. And this is in line with, well, basically this point, both the graphs meet each other here, and it is going to be two minus three. Now, just to show you that we're not fibbing, if you plug these either of these points into either of these graphs, um, it's going to make this statement true. But a lot of the time when we're finding intersection points, we don't always have a graph that we can use. So we have to get better at using algebra. And what we did previously was we said, look, if y equals x minus 5 and y equals minus x squared plus 1, we can make these two y's equal to each other because the y's are equal, these two graphs, only at the intersection points. So now I need to solve this equation. Now, it's a bit tougher. Can someone come online and tell me how to solve this equation? What I feel a bit like I've forgotten how to solve something as difficult as this. Who feels like they might have some tips or some thinking that they could share with me? Well, give me a first step. Give me a first step. What should I do to start solving this? This reminds me of it. Yes, a yes. substitute. Okay, I think, Uwampo, I think isolated x is a good idea, but I'm going to stop by saying, let me get all the x's on one side. So if I take this and I move it across, if I move this thing, I can move the other side. That can stay there, and then I'll have minus 5 minus 1 equals 0. And then I'll have the equation x squared plus x minus 6 is 0. Yes, Michelle, that's exactly what we're doing. So now, to solve this, earlier in the term, there was a thing called the quadratic formula. So some of you may want to use the quadratic formula to help you, to help you solve this equation, or... The other way is you, some of you may want to factorize this trinomial. And then tell me in the chat which method you would use. Would you solve this equation by using the quadratic formula? Or would you try and factorize this? I'm interested to know what the group is, is feeling like they want to do. And remember, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to show you that using algebra, we can still get the same answers that visually we see be getting. Okay, so a lot of you seem to think quadratic is the way to go, which is fine. So A is 1, B is 1, and C is minus 6. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go minus 1 plus minus B squared. So 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 6 over 2 times 1. And then, see, there is it. Uh, I'm going to solve this. I'm going to x is minus one, and you can obviously use your calculator for this. But if you do that, you are going to get. I hope this is the same. Let's have a look. So this is four over two, so I get two. 4x is minus 3. And that makes me a very happy math teacher because x is 2 is what I got over here. And x is minus 3 is what I got over here. And so now I know that I can do this using just algebra. And if I want to get the y value, I simply plug it back into the original. So the y value would just be y equals x minus 5. And so I just put my 2 in, and then I'll get my minus 3. And for this one, I can use the same. 
and I get by minus eight. And just to show you, I've got the point two minus three as an intersection point, and I've got the point minus three minus eight, which was exactly what the graph did. Now, it's time for you to start taking control, but give me a thumbs up if you followed what I was, I was doing there. Okay. So going forward, we're just going to give you a couple more multiple choice questions before you start practicing further, but I think um, the main idea is that using the quadratic formula seemed to help a lot of students there. Okay, let's go to another question, just like that one, or similar. But again, you're not going to use algebra yet. You can just use your thinking. So tell me, there is a sketch um, of graphs y equals x squared minus 2x minus, sorry, minus 3x minus 2. And there's also a graph of y plus x is three, and they're shown over here, um, use the graph to estimate which option you think would be the best estimate for the intersection points or the solution to the pair of simultaneous equations. Over to you guys. Which option do you think it's going to be? Okay, lots of students are saying B. Let's have a look if I agree with you. So when X is naught and Y is three, when X is naught and Y is three, remember, we're looking for the best estimate for the... Okay, let me start by saying this. If I say to you, solve a simultaneous equation or find an intersection point, you actually use the same process. So what they're really asking us here is, what is the simultaneous solution to these two graphs? Or what are the intersection points for these two graphs that are over here? And what you see here is that those two points are going to be the simultaneous solution to these two functions. Or it's going to be the solution is the intersection points. So part of me thinks x is naught and y is 3 can't be because if x was naught, and y is 3, that's actually the y-intercept of the blue graph. So I don't think that's possible. But I do know that the solution to these two um, equations, or finding the intersection point, could be one of the three others. So I think that I agree that this is negative. So the only one that doesn't have a negative, have a look. And it's not going to be, yeah. what gives it away is that this is about negative 1.4. And then I've got 4.4, which is looks right to me because it's above. So that looks like it's about 4.4. That's about negative 1.4. Um, and so that to me means it must be A is the correct answer. That was a bit harder. And I'm really forced to you to see kind of what an intersection point means in terms of the graph and the equation. Give me a thumbs up if you feel like you understand why A is the answer. Give me a thumbs down if you feel like um, I've lost you. Because again, it's need to give a sense from the class how they're feeling. Are you making the connection between the picture and the algebra? That's what I'm trying to show you. And that when I say solve solve the simultaneous equation, when you solve a simultaneous equation, what you're looking for is the intersection of those two graphs that form the equations. It's the same process. Okay, well then let's, 
let's have a look at this next question. Um, so it says, Renanon wants to solve this pair of simultaneous equations by substitution. Which of the following is the correct line of working? So in this case, they haven't given us a graph. They've just given us two equations and they say solve simultaneously or find the intersection point of these two. And it says, which of the following is correct line of working? So you tell me, is it A, B, C, or D? Don't be shy, pull the trigger. It does say by using substitution. So maybe I should point out when it says you use substitution, we normally have to substitute one equation, the easier equation, into the other equation. And so I think I would think that this is the easy one and that is the harder one. And so probably this easy one has to be substituted into the harder one. But again, if, you, if you're not sure, just pull the trigger anyway. Yeah. So I want to suggest to you that when you're solving a simultaneous equation and you don't have both of them be y equals something, y equals something, you have to sub the one into the other to, it, to basically solve it. And so what you're going to need to do here is you're going to have to sub in for y um, something. And that something, in this case, is going to be y equals 5 minus 2x. Now, I don't see anything here that has brackets. So what does that mean? Because it says, which of the following is a correct line of working? Now, I've done the substituting. I've sub this one into the red one. But now, I don't match any of the things. What do, I, what do you think I need to do in order to get it to match one of the things below? Mr. Ace, we have a hand from Siam Kanda. Okay, let's unmute Siam Kanda. What do I need to do? Can you hear me? Siam Tanda, can you hear me? Maybe we... Yes. Hey, how's it going? Hi. What do you think? How do I make this connection here? I don't understand. Can you please try again? I can. So what I would suggest, are you okay that um, I'm substituting the blue equation into the red one? Does that make sense to you, Siam Tanda? Yes. Okay, so you know that this is being subbed in. And what happens there is when you sub in, you eliminate one of the variables. You've eliminated y. And what I need to do next is I need to multiply the 2 by 5, and I get 10, and then the 2 by minus 2x, and I get minus 4x. Now, which of the four options do you think matches this working out over here? Oh. Then it's the first one. So the first one has a plus 5, but I have a plus 10. So I don't think it can be this one, but I was, can you see that this looks like it's the same? 3x plus 10 minus 4x is 15. Oh, yes. Perfect. Fantastic. Now, Thank just you. to show you how we would finish this question, in order to finish it, we'd go, what's 3x minus 4x? It's going to be minus x plus 10 is 15. Then I would take away 10 from both sides, which would leave me with that. And then I would times both sides by minus one, and I would get X is minus five. So that would be the one answer. And then to get the Y value, 
I would need to sub minus five back into one of these. I would sub it back into the five minus two X. So five minus two times something, and that something is that. And so I get five minus two times minus five is plus 10. And so in this question, even though I didn't ask you to do it, the correct answer would be X is minus five and Y is 15. Okay. Let's do one more before we head to the, to the break. Oh, this is the same question. We won't do that. Okay. Let's just do one before we head to the break. So I'm giving you these two equations. And I want you to find me the intersection point of these two graphs or find me a simultaneous solution to these two functions. Find me an X and Y that will satisfy both of them. And I want you to try and do it by yourself and then put the answer in the chat. If you get stuck or feeling lost, I want you to raise your hand. You can do it. You've got this, guys. I feel like I need one of those air horns. You know, those things that go, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, do you know what I'm talking about? Those, like, things for, you know. I feel like yes, I yes, I do. I feel like, that breathing thing. I think I would have quite a lot of fun. And I could, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's for later in the term when I've had some fun to play with, some time to play with gadgets. Um, Kukotso, what is your question? Please unmute and tell me what's going on. Uh, afternoon, sir. Hey. Uh, I joined late because of load shedding. Can you please uh, explain some for me? Okay. So I'm going to do this with you. Are you okay that... Um, these are two, we have to solve the simultaneous equation. And did you see the example that I just did now? Yeah, I see a little bit of it. Okay. Between these two equations, which one is easier? The first one or the second one? Which one looks easier to you? The second one. I agree with you so much. So what's going to happen is I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to sub it into the more difficult one in order to eliminate one of the variables. And what that's going to look like is I'm going to go X plus two, leave a space, plus three equals zero, which is basically the difficult equation with a space in it. And in the space, I'm going to put a value for Y, which is two X plus one. Are you okay with that substitution? Yes. Okay, what do you think I'm going to do next after this? We are going to multiply out those brackets. Perfect. You know what's going on here. Okay. So then, um, what's my next step after multiplying out? We are going to um, subtract or add the like terms. Yeah. If I'm got... correct. Okay. So you've got 5x plus 5 is 0. And then... If I take away five from both sides, I get that. And if I divide both sides by five after that, I should get an answer of X is minus one. Now, here's the problem. How do I find what the Y value is? Because I needed to find an intersection point or a simultaneous solution. I've only got the answer for X. How do I find Y? Now you you have found the the variable of x yes. on the second on the second equation you are going to substitute x to Perfect. get y. Yeah, so you're gonna put you're gonna use the easy one because we always like the easy one, and we get minus two plus one, which gives me minus one, and then basically my answer for this is gonna be minus one minus one. Uh, on, on a graph, the intersection point would be at minus one, minus one. So it would be here. 
Um, or we can just say the coordinate minus one, minus one, or we can write it like this. Okay. I like what I am seeing from the people of the class, but we must take care of our bodies. So what I want you to do is I want you to stand up with me and I want you to take a moment for yourself so that you can stretch out. Let me take a Duck into here. Please turn on your cameras, guys. Let's see your see lovely faces. faces. Come on, you know you want to. Come on, you have don't like... Don't be shy. Think about it like you're in class and you know these people. Well, I suppose you don't, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know us. <laughs> yes, exactly. Come on, let's see those faces. And then what I want to do is I want to start with a bit of a stretch. Um, so let's actually let's start with a bit of a, a loosening up. So we stand up, just shake up your hands, pretend you're doing a I don't know like a wave. Whatever you can do to just shake your body out, shake the legs. Okay, and then let's just do a bit of a twist. So initially, only a little bit of rotation, and then as you feel like your body is loosen up. Okay. Oh, I'm feeling flexible again now. Okay, let's do some shoulder stretches. So tricep stretch, I think this is. And then let's do this one. Okay. Then see if you lift your arms up, point yourself towards the ceiling and go onto your toes. It's quite a balancing one. Oh. And then um, let's do this one. And switch arms. Okay. Shake it out again. And just do some circles. So big circles into small circles. Reverse the direction, small circles into big circles. And then hopefully your body is starting to feel like sitting. It's forgetting what sitting feels like. Um, and let's do um, let's do there was a request from the last lesson to do knee ups. So basically, we're going to do just make sure you don't fall over. And we're just going to do fifteen of these. So like this, you know, jump one, two, three, and so on. Okay, three, two, one, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ten more. One. <laughs> okay. I feel like I've definitely stretched out, um, and I hope that you have too. And let's just do one little brain break question before I move on. So, can you find twenty four using these things here? I feel alive. Oh, my body is. Ooh. I'm saying, Annie, you don't realize how much your body actually needs to stretch when you're just sitting the whole time. And, and, and the thing is, Honestly, as I get, because I, like, obviously, we, as we getting older, like, I, I realize more we're sitting, and we're just not designed for sitting. Like, we have to, must be silly about it to make sure that we have a break every half an hour and we get up. Like, that's literally how we designed. But it is, it's starting to feel like strange to do that. But that's how we're, <laughs> that's how we need to function, really. Um, okay, uh, eight plus eight plus seven plus three. That would be sixteen. Plus 10, that is 26. It's close, but no cigar. Um, eight times three plus seven plus eight. 
that already gets your 24. But how can you use the seven and eight so that you don't affect this thing over here? Because it's basically you've got there so quickly, but now you need to use up the seven and eight. Ah, Tsegavatso has made a suggestion that we go in Basa Greece too. You go eight minus seven is one. And then you say, I've got my one, and now I go times. So eight minus seven is one. And then I go one times eight times three, and that's 24. Okay. And oh, this is interesting. Uh, eight, yeah, perfect. Okay, let's get back to the lesson because I've done quite a bit of stretching, but I think it was necessary. But I, yeah, well done, everyone. I liked what I was, was seeing there. So let's go to a second. Okay, so here is the question for this second part of the lesson. The question is, can you find me the intersection point of these two graphs, or can you simultaneously solve these two equations? And I want to give you time to do this by yourself, and then I want you to put the answer in the chat um, after you're done. I'm going to give you a good three, three minutes to do this. If you ask that, please do raise your hand and ask a question, and then I can assist you, but I also want to give you your chance to shine. So over to you. So I think everyone needs to make sure that they've got the sub step correct. So just give me a thumbs up if you understand that substitution step. And you can go on the journey to see what comes after that. Oh, sorry, this should be this should be three x plus y equals x. I'm going mad. So this should be. They're both equal to y, so we can just make them equal to each other. 3x plus 7, and this is 2x squared plus 8. Apologies, everyone. I made that <laughs> a lot more exciting than it needed to be. We all like some drama in our lives, but maybe this isn't the best place for it. Okay.
Mm -hmm. So what are we getting for our X answers? We might need our calculates for this. Mm. Cool. Yeah, so we have so that's going to be nine minus eight. Sorry, my computer is freezing. I'll Make sure I get it frozen in a second. So I get X being one and X being a half. If I follow, think here. Yeah. And then once I've got that, I still need to get the Y value that goes with that X. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the simplest one, which was three times X plus seven. And I'm gonna put in my answer here of a one, and I'm going to put in here my answer of a half. So what are the final answers going to be then? So Y over here should be 10, and Y over here should be 8.5. And so the simultaneous solutions would be X is one and Y is 10 or X is a half and Y is eight and a half or 8.5. Okay, getting a little bit harder now. Give me a thumbs up if you feel like you're on, on the boat or the bus or whatever vehicle you want to take. Um, or tell me if you're still waiting at the bus stop or wherever it is, the metaphor you use. Okay. Awesome. I think we need to do another one. And one more that's, we'll probably end with this one, but it's a little bit more sneaky. So I want you to solve for me this simultaneous equation. But find me the intersection point of these two um actually maybe let's see here y equals yeah that's fine that's fine i believe in you you can do this so find me the intersection point or simultaneous solution for these two functions keep going guys Maybe somebody can put a tip in the in the chat about how we this looks like the easier one, but we might need to do some work with it before we sub it in. So please yeah, raise your hand or ask a question about that if that confuses you because mm. yeah, Junior. Let's unmute. There we go. Junior, can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Can I ask? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Junior? What do you think we should do? Um, about the in, I must have them 
a different equation or the A yeah. plus seven and square plus eight. I don't understand. Okay. All right. So what I'm it's fine. I'll explain it to you. We'll do it together. So what I'm going to suggest, Junior, is that this first one looks easier than this one, but I need to make it so that one of the variables is by itself. The variable that I want to be by itself is the y. And so if I'm if I add 6x to both sides, I get 6x plus 12. Are you with me on that, Junior? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, okay, now. Second step is I need to sub this y, this, this equation into this one to, to get rid of things or to, oh, flip, I just made the computer angry. Let me ask it. Oh, there we go. Um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to sub into the equation where there's a five y. And so I'm going to take the 6x six, six plus 12, and it's going to go here. Does that make sense to you, Junior? No, it makes sense. Okay, then, now what do you think my next step is going to be? We put the 6x plus 10. Okay, so we would multiply the 5 out, I think, just to get everything kind of on the same thing. So 5 times 12 is 60. And now, what do you think we do next? We substitute. So we substitute, so we move everything to the one side. So we go x squared. Now the 30x is going to become minus 30x, and the minus 9, and then you're going to get minus 60 is 0. And we look up in. Yeah. So now you're going to have to use your formula to help you figure out what the answer to this is. Okay. So give me a seat. You can use the formula to work this out. I'll give you a bit more time. Um, but I'm, that's what I kind of want us to, to do from there. A bit of a tricky one, but we've climbed the mountain. We can do this. So I'll go over the steps again. Step one was isolate the variable. Get the y by itself in the easier equation. Then once you've isolated it, sub it into the other equation where there was a y. Then multiply out. And then move everything to one side and then get it into standard form, where we should have A is 1, B is minus 26, C is minus 69. And now I want to know from students, what do we think those X values are going to be? Okay. What is your answer? You can unmute Kilabokile. Maybe if it's not going to be so clear today. Okay. I see a couple of answers coming in so far. Um, um, I would like to ask you that x, x, x squared minus 76x minus 69 equals to zero. You don't use a quadratic equation. Yeah, so let's just check that there is, there's no mess ups here, but five times six is 36, five times 12 is 60. You, you, you're going to use, I think I would use the formula. Huh? Um, oh, it's minus, so it's not going to be C60. This is minus nine, and then you've got plus 60, so it's going to get minus 69. All right, everyone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this question. We've run out of time. We're going to start this question at the beginning of the next lesson. So I'm going to leave this for you for homework. So please just make sure you've got the question down, and in the next lesson, um, we'll finish it off. But before you do that, can we also just take a poll? Um, I know, Lebo, can we just hit poll? I think we're running out of time. I see I've got a bit too into it. Um, so if we could just release the poll there for students. Um, and then just make sure you've taken a screenshot and then 
We will release the answer in the next lesson there. All right. All right, well done, everyone. I think for our first holiday lesson, you did very well. We made a good, and the main goal today was you just got a bit more used to finding intersection points. And in the next lesson, we'll continue with intersection points, but we'll add some other functions as well. So we'll add a hyperbola and see how the hyperbola changes the picture, if it, if it changes at all, um, for, for finding intersection points.